Welcome back. In this lesson, we'll create a fetch images function to retrieve images from the Pexels API, and we'll also begin creating our gallery of images display. Let's start by clicking on the source directory, and now let's click the new directory icon and create another directory inside the source directory. This will be called lib, short for library. And now inside this lib directory, let's create a new file, and we'll call this fetch images with camel case and then dot ts inside of fetch images let's import type now this is going to be image or images i'm sorry plural results and that comes from our models slash images and notice we're using the at symbol so that's what it asked us when we started our next js project, it asked if we wanted to use the import aliases, and that's what that is. Okay, after that, let's go ahead and use import once again, and now we're going to import our schema. This is the images schema with photos, and that also comes from our models slash images page. And now let's create our function. So we'll say export default, and then this will be async. So we use the keyword async function fetch images and then it's going to receive a url which is a string and the return type is going to be a promise and inside of our brackets we'll put images results and then close out that bracket as well then we'll have a curly brace i'm going to go ahead and press alt z to wrap that down now right now we have the red squiggly from typescript because we're not returning anything yet but we'll eventually get rid of that now inside of this function we want a try catch block so let's say try and of course that will give us the closing curly brace as well. And then after that, we also wanna have a catch. Let's just call the error E for now. And then we'll have the catch block here. So we'll start out with the try and we wanna use fetch with Next.js. Now Next.js has extended fetch and it can do a few extra things, but we're really not going to specify any of that here. So we'll just say const res, which is short for response. Here we'll await fetch and we're going to fetch whatever URL is passed into the function and then we need an options object here because we need to pass in our authorization for the Pexels API so that gets passed in the headers so we'll specify the headers that is an object itself which will have authorization now this was specified by the Pexels API it needs to be a capital A in the keyword authorization here. And now we're going to refer to our Pexels API key. And so we'll say process.env.pexels underscore API underscore key. We're going to leave it at that. Now notice the red squiggly under headers. We will come back to that issue. But that is our fetch. So we'll get that response that is called res. And now we can say if we do not get an okay response, which would be a response between 200 and 299, that's the status code, we want to throw a new error. And inside of here, we can say this is a fetch images error and let me put a line break with a slash in that just indicates a new line now this would go down to the error block if we throw an error here but that just lets us know there was a problem with fetch now if there was not a problem we should have our images as a result so we'll say const images results and this will be an images results type as well now we can put that equal to await res dot json so there we should have our json data inside of images results and we know what type it's going to be as well if we want we could just console.log our images results right here so you could see that now remember this is on the server where this function will run so you would see this in the terminal window not in the browser console now we want to parse the data with our zod schema so here i could even put that note here parse data with Zod schema that we created. So I'll say const parsed data, and we'll set this equal to images schema with photos dot parse. Now we wanna pass in our images results. Now, if this does not parse correctly, according to our schema, Zod will throw an error as well. And we'll once again, catch that down here in our catch block. But we have one other check to put in place. And I wanna say if, parsed 
results, oh, I'm sorry, parsed data, there we go, dot total results. And notice, I'll get rid of that for a second. Notice since we've defined a schema and we're getting help here from TypeScript, if I put dot, it gives what is available here. So I can just pick the total results. I wanna say if that equals zero, we're going to return undefined. This is going to let our application actually kind of gracefully fail if we get zero results. We'll essentially be able to see zero images were found. Otherwise, we're going to return parsed data. Now notice TypeScript doesn't like that return here because we didn't specify we would return undefined. So up here in our promise with images results, we need to say or undefined. So this would be a union type. It's either going to be the images results or possibly undefined could be returned from fetched images. Now in TypeScript, when we log an error, we need to do a little bit of extra, but I'm going to put a reminder here as well. Let's say this will show in terminal console. That is where these log statements would go. So in TypeScript, I need to say if E is an instance of error, then I want to go ahead and console.log my error dot stack and we'll get all the details in the console hopefully we'd, we would catch any problems of course during development you could of course have a larger logging system and you could log an error to something else on the server if you wanted to we're just going to of course use the console log here so now we've completed our function but we can see we still have an issue the file name is in red and we still have that red squiggly under headers that's because typescript knows this could still be undefined even though we have an environment variable even though it's defined in our env.local file there's no real way we can tell typescript that so we need to fix this and i like to do that with one other dependency we can add to this project called invalid so i'm going to open up a terminal window once again type npm i and then invalid which is e n v a l i d and this should quickly add invalid to our project. And there it's added. We can check the package JSON just to confirm. If we go here, we should find invalid listed in our dependencies, and there it is. So we can close package JSON again. So now let's make another new file inside of our library directory here. So I'll create the new file and call this env.ts. In this file, I want to import clean env and also i'm going to import str which just stands for string and whoa i want to alt z to i'm sorry not alt z i want to control z to undo all of that because i quickly tabbed into something i didn't mean so i want the clean env and the str to both come in from invalid now that i have those i'm just going to say const env and set this equal to clean env, which is a function that will receive the process.env. Notice I was using process.env and then of course the Pexels API key to pull in that data from the env file. So here I'm passing in the full process for our environment variables. Now we have curly brackets and here I'm going to say Pexels API underscore key, and I'm going to define it as a string. Now notice this looks a lot like Zod. So we are validating our API keys or anything we have. We're, we're validating all of our environment variables, whatever we would have. We only have this one, but this is very nice when you're working with type safety in your project and you're working with any type of environment variables. So now all we need to do at the bottom is just say export default and of course export that env that we just created above now that we have done this we can go back to our fetch images file and now at the top let's go ahead and import env and that comes from just dot slash env because we had that file in the same directory and now instead of our process dot env dot uh, pexels api key we just really remove the process because we defined env and now we've imported it. So with invalid, we added type safety to our environment variables. And now all we have to do is import env where we have it defined and we've already checked that it is a key or is a string. And so now TypeScript has no problem. No more red squiggly here with the headers. TypeScript knows this is indeed a string.
Okay, before I leave this file, I'm just going to comment out this console log, but I'm going to leave it in here for you if you're looking at my source code in the course resources, because you may want to go ahead and log that to just make sure you're receiving those images. Okay, I'll save that file. And now up here inside the app directory, let's go ahead and create a new directory and we'll call this components. And now inside the components directory, we'll create a file and we'll name this gallery with a capital G dot TSX. Now at the top of this file, let's import the function we just created, which was fetch images. Let's also import type, and this is going to be images results. And now that we have both of those, I've got ES7 React Snippets extension installed, so I can type RFC and create a React functional component quickly. So I'll just press tab. And there we have export default function gallery. I'm going to need to change that to an async function. Otherwise, everything is as I need it. Okay, to begin our gallery component here, we want to say const URL, because remember we need to pass a URL into our fetch images function. For now, it's just going to be one specific URL, and this is the curated URL from the Pexels API. We won't go back to get it, I have it right here for you. It's https colon slash slash api dot pexels dot com slash v1 slash curated. So those are the images we will work with to begin this project. Then we'll define the images themselves and that will be images results type. So we can just tab down and get that. Now let's set this equal to, oh, and I said just images results type. Remember, it could also be undefined. This function could return either one. We'll set this equal to await fetch images of course, we need to pass in the URL so it knows what to fetch. Once again, you could console log the images if you want to confirm at this point that you are receiving those. I'm going to say if there are no images, at this point we're going to return an H2, and I'm going to use some Tailwind classes here. So I'll just use dot with Emmet to extend these classes, and it's M4, and then dot text dash 2XL dot font dash bold, then I should be able to press tab and have all of those class names applied quickly to this H2. And I just want to say no images found. And if I press Alt Z, that will wrap down to the next line so we can see everything. Okay, if there are no images, we have what we're going to return. But if there are images, we're going to return some JSX here inside of this return. Instead of the div with the name gallery that we have here, let's delete that. And I'm going to use a section element as the parent. And then inside of this section, we're going to have an unordered list. And then inside of the unordered list, we need to map over the images that we've received. So we'll have images dot photos remember that's where the array of actual photos is and then we will map and then for each photo inside I'm going to put another parentheses here not a curly bracket but a parentheses then we're going to have our list item which should receive a key now we want the key to be the photo dot id and after that, we need to close out that list item and inside of the list item we need to put in the photo dot source dot large. If you remember, that is the photo URL we were going to grab. So all we're going to do is list the URLs of the photo to begin with, to or of the photos, to make sure we're receiving all 15 images that we should receive from this URL. So let's save this file, and then we'll need to import the gallery into our main page. So our page.tsx, it's inside of the app. So here at the very top, we can say, import gallery, which should come from components gallery. And once you've done that, all we're going to return instead of the hello world here is the gallery component. So with that return saved, let's now open up a terminal window and we'll type npm run dev, press enter to start our application. It should be running on localhost 3000. You can now hold down control and click and it should launch it inside of Chrome. So I'll pull that up and we'll check out our application. And our project gracefully failed. So we do have an error. Let's go back and see what the issue is inside of our code. So we can see we did log the error to our terminal window as well. 
Let's look at what we've got. So we return the gallery. That should be fine. Previously, we were at the gallery. Let's check out our URL, and I see the issue already. I might have said one when I was typing, but I typed the letter I. This should be pexels.com slash V1, not the letter I, but V1 slash curated. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we should be able to go back and check out the application. If we open the terminal as well, it is still running here. It looks like it already put in the request and everything was successful. So let's open up the web page. And yes, now we have 15 URLs that we mapped over inside of our gallery components. So that's working as expected. Let's go back to VS Code and make a couple quick changes. Let's go ahead and close the terminal. It can continue to run. That is no problem. One of the things I want to do is something we just didn't do early on because I like dark mode, but we're going to switch that and make sure the background is now light. So let's go ahead and highlight everything under these tailwind lines here, the top three lines. I'm in the globals.css file now, by the way, and everything else is going to get deleted in this file. So Everything else we've got, I'll just hold down shift, make sure I click once again to get it all and hit backspace. So now all that should be left inside of globals.css are these three lines. So I'm going to save that. Now let's go back to the gallery component as well. And instead of just listing out the URLs, of course we confirmed we had those, let's just make a few more changes. One is to add some class names to the section from Tailwind. So I'll say class name equals, inside of here I'm going to put px-2my, uh, not py, but my-3. Then I'm going to make this a grid with a gap-2. And I'm going to put in one other thing that is not defined readily in Tailwind. So we're going to have to do that in our Tailwind config, but I'll go ahead and add it now. It is grid-calls. So we're going to defi define the grid columns. Then I'm just going to name this gallery. Now that doesn't exist in Tailwind yet, so we'll have to add that inside of our Tailwind config. But before we do, let's change our map here. So instead of mapping over those URLs and showing those, we can just go ahead and remove that because we're not going to list those. I just want to show gray squares so we can kind of start to get the idea of our gallery. So instead of a unordered list, I guess, we could go ahead and remove those as well. And inside, we're just going to create divs. So I'll highlight that li and change it to div. Now notice mine also changed the closing one. Yours might not do that. I think I have an auto rename tag extension also installed. So if you want to search for that extension, it's called auto rename tag. But now we've got a div inside, gets a key of a photo. I guess I did, no, I didn't leave that URL in there. So now we do still have the same ID. Let's add some class names. So class name and equals inside of here, I'm going to give this an H64, which sets the height to 256 pixels then a background dash gray dash 200 and rounded dash XL, which will just round those corners. So we should have just some gray squares with rounded corners that I'm going to map over instead of that previous unordered list. Let's go ahead and save that. But before this will actually apply the way I want it to, we have to define this grid calls gallery inside of our tailwind dot config dot js file inside of the tailwind config file you see we have an extend here under theme and then a background image is defined so we just want to follow that up after the background image we're going to say grid template columns and we'll just add a definition here for that class name we put in so it is a gallery and then i'm going to say repeat and then pass in auto dash fit. And this is just a normal CSS definition now using min max. And I'm going to have 250 pixels for our square and one fraction. And now that is going to define what we want for our grid. So it's defined as the grid calls gallery class. And I had to specify gallery here being the word that I wanted to use with grid template columns, which is defined in Tailwind as grid dash calls. And then you usually have the final dash and the definition, but here we defined a custom one. So now with all of that defined, 
this should be applied correctly back here to our section. Now I think our project is still running. So with it still running, let's go back to the browser. Now we should have a white background because remember we got rid of all of those default definitions in the globals.css. So we have a white background and it has 15 gray squares here, four in each column or four in each row right now with four columns. Of course, this would resize. So if I open up DevTools with Control Shift and the letter I, we should be able to, let me drag this down to where we can actually see the page. We should be able to resize and see there's two columns, one column, two columns, up to four columns, maybe even more. No, that's where we stopped the width. So we can get up to four columns with a 250 pixel square. But notice it is responsive. That square isn't always the same size. It's just what we put in there for that uh, auto fit definition for those columns. Anyway, that should get us started with our gallery. In the next lesson, we'll begin working with the Next.js image component.